Welcome back to Praise and Brits, my name is Lawrence. And I'm Natalie. A few weeks ago, we did a collaboration with our collaboration group, go back and watch that, about how we plan our trips and where we're going, things like that. Yeah. Now one thing that we loved, the first time we did our trip, we went to Florida mm -hmm. for the first six months and we went all the way down the coast and it cost us a bunch of money. So then we decided to go inland a bit rather than the coastal stuff to save some money on campsites. Correct. And they were some of the best places we went. Mm -hmm. They were local places, they weren't tourist places. I apologize for the music in the background. I can't tell them to turn it off. Yep, there's a live performer here. <laughs> um, and so anyway, so some of the best places we find aren't always necessarily the big places. It's a little bit like saying, if you go to the UK, um, go to London. Go to London. Yeah. There is no. nothing like London in the UK other than London. It's mm. the same as, oh, I went to the US and I went to New York. New York is its own place. Vegas is its own place. What we want to see is all the cool stuff, the hidden gems. And that's where we are today. So let's roll the intro and we'll explain why we're here and what it's all about. It makes me wonder. So for those of you who don't know, for the first 16 years of my life, I was born and bred in St Albans in the UK, in Hertfordshire in the UK. Well, now we're in St Albans in Vermont, and this was named after St Albans in Hertfordshire, UK. Yep. So we went in the museum, she was thoroughly impressed of my history, <laughs> was very excited to meet someone. She said it gets very irritating because when she Googles St Albans, it always comes up with the UK one, not the Vermont one. Correct. So this building in the museum was built here in like 1830s or something like that. And then, just off the top of my head, it was a school building until literally like the 1970s. Correct. We were nearly alive then. <laughs> True. Scary. <laughs> I can't draw our logo, I'll be here all day. Hey Natalie, so they have a railroad in here? I wish I'd turn it on, that'd be cool. Anyway, this is uh, Thomas, as you probably know. Yeah. But in the in the UK, we call it Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. Whereas here, I think it's called Thomas the Train. Oh, that's very basic. It is very basic. Yeah, I like it's Tank Engine. <laughs> but did you know that the series was actually narrated by one of the Beatles? I did not know that. Yeah, originally. Fun fact. It's different now. can't remember. Um, Bango, no. That's not a person. Ringo? Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> Ringo Starr narrated uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. That's cool. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler and a short stumpy dome. This is cool. They have an old genuine newspaper from 18... 61. That's cool. I love this old stuff. I think it's an age thing. I never cared about it when I was younger, and now I'm like, wow. <laughs> what did you touch? Don't, don't touch things. It's paraffin wax. I didn't think it was. I thought it'd be fake. It's actually paraffin wax. Don't touch it. So St. Albans is very much famous for um, farming as well. So the two major things here is that the, this is the most northern point part of the Civil War. Um, and then the second thing is farming, which is obvious because it was quite a small town. And the third thing is the railways. So this museum that we're in has a bit of everything and it gives you the history of all of those things. All right, this is the fountain in the center square of St. Albans. So one interesting thing around here is that there was a big, great bank robbery from the southerners, uh, from the southern army. But what they did is they all went up to Canada and then they came into St Albans like in small groups, mm -hmm. just like travelers would. And then once they were here, they collaborated, they robbed the bank, they stole all the horses and then they fled. They stole all the money. So they were desperate for money. And this is where they gathered. Completely unrelated, <laughs> other than this is the same location. But this fountain uh, has been revamped. 
but the original ones were taken down, sent off and made used as moulds for these ones. The original ones are in the museum. They are, they're green. They're green, they're painted green, which is very strange. <laughs> My theory is that they wanted them to look like the Statue of Liberty. Ah. But they were painted, they were put in a year after the Statue of Liberty was raised, so the Statue of Liberty was not always green. Oh, interesting. It was shiny and then it oxidized and that's why it turned green. So I think these were first and the Statue of Liberty copied these. <laughs> All right, we just Natalie just noticed something in the in Hi. between the buildings over here. So the really weird thing about this place, there is St Albans town and St Albans city. Mm -hmm. And so the one in the UK is St Albans city, but this one is a city as well. But what is weirdly is, weirdly, <laughs> what is weird is St Albans city is completely surrounded by St Albans town. And it's a separate municipal. <laughs> Completely separate new mis new municipalities. Municipalities. Okay. Completely separate. So that's really weird. But if uh, they ever had a war between the town and the city, you wouldn't ever be able to get out of the city because it's completely surrounded by the town. Don't even know where we're going, but it's a cool little thing in between the buildings, isn't it? We're going to get mugged. We're going to get mugged. Cool. So another interesting fact is. Um, uh, there is a lot of immigrants here, or there was a lot of immigrants here back in the like day. Us. Like us. Well, no, because I think they were illegal immigrants. Okay. So the thing is, we're only like 15 miles from Quebec in yes. Canada. And so what they would do is they would get a boat or something over to Canada. What are you scared of? So they would come over to Canada and then they would cross the border. And so this was one of the first towns that they would get to. Anyway, the... Uh, architecture is really cool like this is really old old school it looks a bit creepy it's not i'm getting a very good vibe from the whole place okay sure you are except natalie right now because we walk through this creepy alleyway another interesting fact off the top of my head natalie yes uh this was a massive railway town i didn't know that but there I was chose it there was <laughs> there used to be 200 trains pass through here every day oh, fun. And there used to be 40 railway tracks. I saw the picture. Yes, that's 40 very large. railway tracks that run through, and there is now only one. Two. Is there? One. One. I can't remember. I think there's one, okay. but there could be two. <laughs> one, give or take one. No, there's definitely one. So one or give one. And this is the last remaining train line that comes through here. This would have been full with 40 lines going all the way down here. And that's crazy, but I've never been this close to a train before. It's plugged in and everything. Like a 50 amp hookup, just plug it in. It's not as big as I thought this close up. Some other interesting facts, just off the top of my head, is that the population here is only 6,877 people. Ooh. And I can't, I can't think off the top of my head whilst we're walking. <laughs> um, and uh, so this was originally settled in 1783. Okay. It became a town in 1785 and then became a city in 1896, just off the top of my head. And then another St Albans town was built around the outside. That's yeah. weird, isn't it? And I think I already mentioned this is named after the St Albans in Hertfordshire that I grew up in. Correct. So that's cool. Um, we'll find some other facts. We'll find some other facts. There's one building I want to go and see down here that's one of the historic ones. It's actually available to buy for 1.9 million. So let's go check it out. Let's all chip out. in. We'll all chip in and buy it. Now we've said this a lot since we've been up north, but it is very British, isn't it? Yes. I agree. So there is, I mean, not so much the architecture, some of it is, but just things like dumb stuff, like the grass is different. Yeah, true. And the layout and just some of the stuff. This feels, if the cars were on the other side of the road and they were different cars, I think this could, you could confuse this for the UK. Don't you think? Yeah. Actually, the roads are way bigger, well, but also apart from that. We found it. This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> like the station, this is like an old school little town. But it's not really, I mean, the 6,000 people live here. It's got everything you need, like Ace Hardware and Bar Burger King and McDonald's. Yep. What more do you need? Um, and there's pubs, which Natalie's very upset about because I won't let her go in. Free. We are not day drinking for like the fifth weekend in a row. It's my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so this is strange because you can just walk along the platform. This is just the railway. It's right here. You can just walk straight along it. So this building we're walking past is the old school building. Let me get over here so you can see it better. Well, you'll have to excuse the traffic because there's a big road behind us here, but 
this is like one of the original um, railroad buildings and so this is where the 40 tracks would have been just on the side annoyingly they knocked down the building which was the building where they would do all the servicing on it but this original one is still here which is annoying because that first bit was like the coolest bit it had the big yeah. you know tunnels for it and stuff but anyway apparently this is for sale 1.9 million i say we all just chip in and buy it we could live here have this a home base yeah maybe like build some rv garages in it something like that sounds good to me i'm guessing it's listed i'm guessing you can't change it at all it's definitely haunted look all the lights are on oh oh god oh that's very creepy Doesn't matter what religion you are, there is a church here for you. <laughs> We're in the parking lot of the museum. It's around the back, by the way, so you don't need to park on the main road. Oh that was good timing. I'm just about to talk about churches. One church there. There's one church there. There's one church here. And in the background, you can just see the spire of another one. There is four churches that we know of within about one mile square. Less yeah. than that, because the whole city is four miles square cubed, squared. Yeah, eight miles to walk around all the edge, which we did most of that today. Yes. So about two miles down the road from St Albans City, you come down through St Albans City, through St Albans Town and then you get to St Albans Bay and it looks lovely. There we go, lots of parkings. I'm gonna park up and then we'll have a little stroll along the bay. All right, so we parked up and we took a stroll along St Albans Bay, which is really nice. And the funny thing is, so in St Albans in the UK, there is an old Roman ruins there. It's called Verulamium. Um, and I took it for granted when I lived there. Yeah. And we used to walk through it from the school to go to like swimming class when I was a kid. And we used to walk along the Roman ruins. I think they're all fenced off now, but anyway, this has the same vibe. Yeah. This is a park. You can probably hear there's a band going on. There's a bit of a festival going on. Um, the bay is closed because of water quality. So there's no one actually in there. And I've got to admit, it smells pretty bad. We don't know what it is. We did a bit of research, but we couldn't find anything. The internet is just terrible out here. The internet I'll is sell, bad. Well, AT&T is bad. Quick interruption. Yeah. Natalie spoke to a lady. I did. Uh, there's been some massive floods here in Vermont. You're watching this probably a couple of weeks later, um, but right now there's been some huge floods here. So the water level is really high. Otherwise it's normally a really nice bay. Yes. But it always gets a little bit nasty at this time of year, just because of the algae growth and stuff, right? Correct. So they said at the beginning of the year, well, over the winter, yeah, over the winter it freezes, and then at the beginning of the year, apparently it's really nice to swim in. Yes, so it's not always this nasty. I think nice is subjective, though, because it's got to be freezing until oh, the point. end of summer. So oh. I don't think it's going to be fresh. Okay, anyway, we wanted to show you a little bit of a different view. We go and see these weird and quirky places all the time, but we understand that not everyone finds them interesting. Yeah. Some of them can be a bit same-ish, but this one for us was pretty cool. We just wanted to show you the kind of things that we look at when we're on our road trips, as well as the main things. Well, so, I don't know, we haven't done Burlington and Stowe, which everyone raves about. No, so I'm yeah, sure a lot of people said go to Stowe in Vermont, uh, yeah. and we haven't. No. But another thing that we do when we're RVing is that we don't stress ourselves to go and see everything that we possibly can in every area, because we want to come back. Yeah. And so, you know, in 10 years time, I'd love to come back here and then we can do Stowe, come back to this place and things like that. So we don't mind missing out on a few bits just yeah. as an excuse to go back. I agree. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is literally what we do most of the time, go and see these weird places. So anyway, we're gonna leave a video up here. We think you will enjoy. Uh, don't forget to hit the thanks button because Natalie loves it when you do that. <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe, share this if you know anyone from St Albans, either in the UK or here, or anyone that might find this useful at all. Uh, the only other thing you have to do is hit the join button to become a brassiere and support a couple of tits, Natalie and myself. Anyway, thank you to everyone below who is already a Brazier. We appreciate you massively and we hope to give you some real-time updates on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram and the YouTube community. Yes, 
something like that. I don't something know what you just like waffled on about. I just waffled on a load of stuff. It's <laughs> but yes, if you become a member, you get real-time updates as to where we are because unfortunately, as we you know, a lot of our videos are behind. Yeah. So you're watching this, we probably moved on somewhere else. Yeah, that's what it takes for editing. It takes like a that. long time to edit. It does. All right, cool. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week.